Hey, good morning. Now, since I was testing out that really fancy uh, Criterion boring head on the more jig bore, um, I thought I could uh, kind of include a couple other things here that uh, might be of interest on, like how to use the machine as a measuring machine as well as uh, a locating and boring machine. And one of the great accessories is the uh, scope here and uh, these things uh, centering scopes uh, they were kind of common uh, in the aftermarket catalogs and stuff and uh, but there's a problem with them and uh, most machines aren't accurate enough to return them you know to remove them and return them and they're on center now a good way to center one of these is uh, to use the tiny drill dot that I did. And uh, so I've got this uh, scope centered, got a little tiny scale there, right there on that tiny little dot that I used to align the boring bar. Now that dot is still in line with the y-axis. So it's, the uh, y-axis is centered with that bore there. Oh, that's a nice looking bore. Plus or minus 10 thousandths, what I can do on a bore uh, between three quarters and an uh, inch and an inch with that head. <laughs> And that's pretty good on this old time machine, I think. So anyway, I figured out a camera setup, this old uh, Canon Elf on macro will show an image looking through the scope, which is pretty cool. And I can show you a couple uh, kind of cool things uh, about this. And I will turn the lights down and we'll look through the scope. All right, now we're uh, on the ELF camera, and I'm going to back this off, and you're looking at the grid of the more Perkins Elmar um, centering scope. So I'm going to there's the drill dot down low there, see it? Now I'm going to bring it to center here. Now I put a mark on the dial down here, looking through it by eye. And, uh, with my eye, it was perfectly centered. I'm not real sure. Let's see how we're doing here. I can kind of dim that light a little bit. You might be able to see the grid better. Let's try that. Okay, it's down below. And that's that little tiny center dot I made to line the boring bar. Okay, and I'm going in the direction of the screw's arrow on the accurate side of the screw. Okay, that shows it's centered. Now, you look at those lines. The space between the lines in a circle is approximately two thousandths of an inch. The uh, lines themselves are close to ten thousandths of an inch. And I was looking at this grid. If you get the light on it just right, that thing's like cut somehow. It's cut like crystal glass. Now I imagine the, the reticle that this is, is adjustable like a rifle scope, but with, uh, uh, it looks like four screws. Instead of two, it's got four, so they're opposing, and you just push it back and forth. Now, 
The best way I found to uh, center the centering scope is to make that little drill dot like that, or even a smaller one with the tiniest bit near set, and uh, then put the scope in without moving anything, then center the scope on that dot. Let's move it up. I'll move it back. I'm kind of feathering the light a little bit with my hand. I think it helps. Then I'll bring it back to center. Okay, I'll turn the lights back on and show a little bit more on the usefulness of this thing. Okay. Okay, moved back from center to the dot, and that distance measures, you can see it here, it's on 6, 0.5, looks like 0.6, look over, it didn't come to 0, so it's 0.5, 8, 4, And on the veneer, it's right between, <laughs> right between those two, right there. I would call it eight, five point eight four eight is the distance from the center to that little tiny mark. And um, my experience with this, you can count on plus or minus two ten thousandths, but if you're very careful, you can do it, uh, and you got good edges and dots and things like that, plus or minus one ten thousandths non-contact measuring with this uh, optical center finder. And I used one of these on a Hauser jig bore, uh, a small one. It had Morse taper too, and on that kind of a taper, it returned to zero all the time. The problems you're going to have is trying to hold these in a collet, or uh, unfortunately the R8 taper is kind of like 5C. It's just not as accurate as it needs to be to use something like this. All right, I hope you found uh, some of that useful. Now, I've also tried, <clears throat> excuse me, tried this scope on tail stalks, uh, trying to center stuff on face plates on the lathes. And there's a problem with lathes that people probably don't really realize that uh, I'll give you a couple specs. Standard for this machine here, height of the tailstock compared to the height of the uh, headstock, five thousandths higher. That's right, five thousandths, not, not center to center, five thousandths high is where it should be now. And the Monarch 10 E is two thousandths high. And <laughs> there's some other problems too with lathes, and uh, one of them is the lathe must, the headstock must be slightly kicked out this way so it uh, faces a concave. That's critical. You can't have a wave. You can't have a wave facing a convex. Everything you turn on it won't sit flat. <laughs> and the degree of convex is um, kind of a hard one to chase down. But generally, it should be two or three tenths on a five-inch disc for an engine weight. And 
maybe less on a tool, tool room lathe. And that can be specified on some lathes for some industries. So you want a little bit of concave um, on your uh, facing work for sealing um, things off, sealing pressure. And the slight concave, as they used to say, can re be removed by nominal lapping. Remember that term, nominal lapping? You used to be able to buy um, those one, two, three blocks. They go, yeah, <clears throat> one, two, three, but one or two tenths over for nominal lapping. Okay, haven't heard that term for a while, so I kick it out there. So, this machine not only punches holes, it can measure holes. And one of the problems uh, is uh, when you magnify something as much as that, it's over 30 magnification, uh, edges look fuzzy. So, it takes a little bit of uh, working with it for a while. And you got to be patient with a machine like this, like me kicking around that boring head for so long. I'm done doing that. I might move it over here and try it and see how close I can get on this machine. But it, it's not a bad thing for me to do because then I know what I can do with that head. You know, something comes in, oh, I can use that head because I've already tested it and it works for this or it works for that. Okay, I'm going to uh, uh, have a lot better sound here uh, after tomorrow. I got more attachments that are supposed to be here. It, it's kind of a difficult thing to use this, uh, these action cameras like this GoPro, which is ideal for the harsh conditions in the shop. I mean, stuff gets knocked over and drop it, and uh, they got the carbide dust from the grinder, uh, which can foul uh, the other cameras I found. So I've, I've, got, the, I've got this, I got a, a Sony underwater camera that, <laughs> that works pretty good, so uh, well, um, and again, that one, uh, uh, the problem is hooking sound up to these waterproof cameras that weren't designed to hook uh, microphones up to. And uh, it, it's a bit of a challenge. And another thing is stuff doesn't communicate with each other well at all. It's like uh, you have to pay like a buck to uh, Microsoft, so uh, Microsoft uh, will recognize the GoPro images or you can't even load it on your computer. It's just like there's uh, a twist in every turn. You can spend, or myself spent days, trying to plug one of these cameras into the computer and it doesn't accept it, it doesn't work. Then I read somewhere, man, I gave up on that and pull the chip out and just stick it in a chip reader. Uh, solved everything doing that. And uh, I'm gonna give it a try to see if I can plug this new camera into the new computer and see if it worked, but uh, it didn't work good with the old camera and the old computer. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm plugging along, and I hope you're doing well in your uh, garage. Uh, I'm going to be getting a lot more done because it's cooling off. It, uh, it's been pretty, uh, pretty bad. But I've been working down in my uh, basement area. I got a clear spot for um, a, a sun and home. I already have a Herrick surface grinder down there, and I have the... Uh, of course, the uh, American rotary phase converter, I got that going everywhere. I run my woodworking machines, and I got to wire up the, those grinding and the hone machine. And I'll have a, another work area. Uh, I, uh, another guy, Mel, that watches, he's, he's got stuff in his basement, too. I think he just stuck a, a little surface grinder down there. <laughs> but uh, I, I got a bunch of little surface grinder tricks, too. It'll be kind of fun to do. Blend all this stuff together. Surface grinder's been kind of missing from the equation here for a while. Well, I hope the weather's holding out for you and you're all doing well. It's uh, looking a little better here. I'm thinking of a vacation here pretty quick, uh, heading on up to uh, uh, look at some mine sites and explore in Montana a little bit. But that'll, that's a little bit off. I'll see if I can get a lot done. Okay.
This is what I'm up to anyway. Staying out of trouble. <laughs>